man how you guys doing welcome to episode 767 don't forget to catch the second part of the show live on the radio station <sighs> telling you man this first story really gets me by the way don't forget to like and subscribe over on youtube ptsd it's huge among our veterans that have been in war that have served this country gave their blood gave their soul for everything this country stands for i ask myself after doing something like that on a level many citizens won't why do veterans have to fight for everything that is coming to them? Why all the red tape? Why can't you provide the services that they fought for? It's funny. Those in Congress, they can vote to send all our kids off to war. Our sons, our daughters, mothers, fathers, out to war while they'll sit back and enjoy a whiskey or a good cigar. No worries about bullets flying over their head. When you see war, you're going to have some mental effects from that. PTSD. Our soldiers now are committing suicide at an alarming rate. What is the government doing for them? I want to know. I am glad that there's organizations that have stepped up to help our veterans in need. Because they really do need it. And especially bikers, they always step up to make sure they help the veteran, especially those suffering from PTSD. Let's take a uh, look real quick at this uh, video and we'll be right back and uh, we'll talk about it. Echo Club based out of Minot will be honoring the memory of a guardsman who lost his battle with PTSD in 2007. Kaylee Paulus joins us in studio with more. Kaylee, what can you tell us? Good evening, Grace and Joe. Those who served with Joe Beale took some time with me to share their memories of him. They discussed how they kept his memory alive over the past 14 years and will also con will continue to do so later this month. In 2010, June 27th became known as National Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Awareness Day. It's the same day as the birthday of the late Joe Beale, who served as a staff sergeant in the North Dakota Air National Guard. Joe Beale that I served with over in Iraq, he's one of my best friends and uh, we got home from Iraq in 2006. But for many service members, the war does not end when they return home. April of 2007, um, he actually committed suicide. During his two tours in Iraq, Staff Sergeant Beale was tasked with finding and removing improvised explosive devices. The Guard's 164th Combat Engineer Battalion started the annual motorcycle ride across the state in his memory. He actually picked up the Joe Beale ride uh, as our uh, main ride uh, here in Minot. Uh, the ride had been going on since 2007, uh, but it was just mostly the people that had uh, deployed with Joe. Apathy Motorcycle Club continues to work with Veterans Affairs Organization, helping veterans struggling with combat-related issues. Remember him. 2006 he was over in Iraq from a lot of the stories that people heard Fallujah especially was nasty you're just not going to forget something like that and it's up to every one of us to make sure that we help out as much as we can we got to get to these government officials we really do and tell them enough's enough don't make our veterans beg no longer. It's just pitiful that they have to. 
Next story out of Mercury News, Federal Court, Bay Area. Hell's Angels plead not guilty to firearms charges. Two Solano County or Solano County members of the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club have been arraigned in a federal courtroom in Sacramento, pleading not guilty to gun charges and face more court dates in the coming weeks. At, uh, let's see here. Dennis Killo Jr., 51 of Vacaville, indicted last month by a uh, federal grand jury, is charged with being a felon in possession of two different firearms. That's one thing I never understood. If you do your time, you pay your debt to society, you should get your Second Amendment rights back. That just isn't the case. You know, some states after a certain amount of time, I believe in Texas, do that. But ain't that the whole point? You put your time in, you uh, serve out your sentence, you should get all your rights back. I never understood that. Uh, in a separate case, Jamie Alvarez, 51, also was charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. It's like, it's nothing but big business for these people. Nothing but big business. Uh, let's see here, uh, in front of Judge Kimberly Moyer, uh, Alvarez was arraigned on May 31st. Uh, an investigation into a brutal uh, beating at the Hells Angels uh, chapter clubhouse led to the illegal firearm possession charges. Of course, it's at U.S. federal court. According to the court documents in October of 2021, two different victims, both of whom were members of a different motorcycle club that is considered a, quote, puppet club of the Hells Angels, were beaten by Kilo and Alvarez and other club members based on perceived infractions of Hells Angels rule. Be interesting if they, uh, Testify at this. Now, they searched Kilo's home and found two firearms, uh, Taurus G2C 9mm, with an obliterated serial number, maybe he dropped it, and a Taurus PT 745. Uh, he has several prior uh, convictions, including a uh, firearms conviction. By law, is prohibited from uh, possessing any firearms. And then it goes on about Alvarez with a Glock 27. Dangerous weapon. Oh. Now they're going to face a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison and $250,000 fine. Like I said, it's all about money. They make money off of anyone who serves time in the joint. So because they were a felon beforehand and had guns, now they're looking at 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. You cannot tell me that it's all about fleeing in the streets or crime prevention. Get out of here with that, will you? Unbelievable. Anyway, main story today is coming up with the Huns, Pagans, Hells Angels, and the biker brawl that got eight people arrested. Sean Mooney. And I'm Priscilla Casper. New at 5, the eighth and final arrest has been made in the case involving a violent fight between motorcycle gangs. It was two weeks ago when the Pima County Sheriff's Department served multiple search and arrest warrants. News for Tucson's Lupita Murillo has been following the story and has the latest on this case tonight. Seven search warrants were served in Pima and Yavapai County, and all eight people were arrested and charged with multiple felony counts. Court documents show this was a brawl between rival motorcycle gangs. Generally, uh, members of motorcycle gangs are considered to be violent. 
October 2021, deputies were called to this bar where multiple motorcycle gang members were at. Those named in the report, the Huns, the Pagans, the Sons of Odin, and Hell's Angels. Two people were stabbed and taken to a local hospital. Both survived. After a seven-month investigation, law enforcement raided places in Tucson and the Avapai County. These four people were picked up in Tucson and charged with participating in a criminal street gang and to commit aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, dangerous instrument. These two were arrested in Yavapai County, 40-year-old Michael Kopke and 41-year-old Robert Crane. Their bonds totaled $125,000. What happened last October was a very violent incident, and the Pima County Sheriff's Department takes these kinds of things very seriously. Uh, we put a lot of effort into solving this case, and here we are today with arrests. Sheriff Chris Nano says this case would not have been as successful had it not been for their law enforcement partners, especially during these difficult times when agencies are short-staffed. Everybody pitching in, recognizing that this is a violent threat, not just to the Pima County Sheriff's Department or its residents, but the entire valley, and in, in fact, in this case, the entire state. Reporting from Midtown, Lupita Murillo. How is it a violent threat to the county? It was between the club. So how, how is it a threat to the community as a whole? The narrative that they push is unreal. Actually, it's kind of hard to believe that anybody would fall for the type of stuff that these cops are putting out. And that's one of the reasons, if you ever notice, that when cops talk about uh, clubs participating in toy runs or something, they're always saying it's a cover for their illegal activity. Come on, man. Nobody's believing that anymore. You guys get arrested at the same rate. No, I have to say, I have to correct myself. A larger rate, a more uh, higher rate than club members do. And that study was out of Kentucky. So for everything that you say a club member does, I can find four or five, you know, active law enforcement that gets busted as well for the same thing. It's like, don't you guys ever even get sick of your own narrative around clubs? Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show right now with China Dow. Listen in over on the Google app if you got Android, Insane Throttle Radio, or you can listen in live right now over on Discord as well as hear it on all the major podcast platforms. We'll be right back after this music break. 